Okay. Okay, and we are ready to <clears throat> like to start on time and end on time. So here we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Marilyn London, and I am a board member of the Friends of the Sterling Road Library, as well as the membership chairman. So um, welcome to everybody. And I am so glad that you are joining us and looking to see who is in the gallery. I see a lot of names that I don't know and being the membership, not guru, not whatever. Uh, I know who is and who isn't a friend. So welcome, first of all, to the friends. Thank you very much for your support. It's because of you that we are able to have Shelly with us um, and all the times that he's with us as well as our other lecturers. And it is because of your support and your generosity. For the people who are new to us tonight, welcome. We are thrilled that you are joining us. And I ask you to please check us out at www.sterlingfriends.org and see the amazing programs that we do offer. And in order to be part of our group, um, please join us for as Where's Jackie? I know you're here. Jackie always says $10 a year. It is the biggest bargain in town. You more than paid for it just by being with Shelly tonight. So please join us. And we are 400 members strong. And we would love you to be a friend as well. So I look forward to hearing from you. Before I pass this on to Shelly, I just want to ask you to make sure you check your newsletter that you receive. Um, tomorrow we have Emmanuel at seven o'clock doing his music program. On um, Wednesday, we, there would be chair yoga at 11. And then for those of us who are New Yorker fans with Hannah, we have a great discussion. You should uh, join us if you're interested in, in the level of the discussions that we have in the New Yorker, it, it really is educational and fascinating. And then on um, on Thursday at eleven at um, two is Ageless Grace and Bacha Cone is another of our phenomenal lecturers, and she is going to be lecturing on phobism. And um, she is um, she lectures at FIU and is. Uh, has an amazing following and if you come once you will be hooked so this takes us through the rest of this week and it is a very good <clears throat> now i will um introduce shelly and for the um for those of you who know shelly you know how amazing he is he is definitely he knows his his foreign movies and he makes us love it and he tells us all about the things that we missed when we thought we saw it and we understood it originally, then we have to go back and see it again. So um, Shelly is, is definitely on board with us, will be with us till the end of this year, at least because we haven't planned 23 yet. And he has many things that he does in addition to lecturing to us, I will put his email address on the chat. Please check it out and look to see all of the great things that he is doing, including the fabulous cruises that he hosts. So if anybody wants a vacation and um, one that is going to be totally memorable, I, I you know, implore you to check out his email send him any questions you might have for him and check out your next vacation. So Shelly, let's hear all about the elephant and the butterfly. I thought it was the nicest, sweetest movie. I really loved it. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you everybody for showing up. Wow, we got some crowd. We uh, this is terrific. Marilyn, you can come to all my Zooms and introduce me. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a pleasure to be back. And yes, this evening's film is The Elephant and the Butterfly. Uh, this is a film that I discovered 
about uh, four or five years ago when it first came out. It, it won a particular award, which is at a festival that takes place in Minnesota every year called the Heartland Film Festival. And it walked away with the grand prize. Uh, it is from Belgium. It's by a young woman who this was her, I think this was her second film. Her name is uh, Emily uh, Van Elmt. Uh, and uh, I will tell you something interesting about her in a little while. Anyway, the, the name of the film in French is Drôle de Père, Drôle de Père, which is Funny Father, Funny Father, very different, different title than The Elephant and the Butterfly. And uh, it was produced, the film was produced by Jean-Pierre and Luc Dardenne. If you don't know who they are, they are two brothers that uh, they direct their own films. They write and direct their own films. They've done about 15 or 16 films. They're always winning at the Cannes Film Festival and their films have been nominated for the Academy Awards. Uh, they are two wonderful directors and uh, they decided to produce this film because it does much of what they do but in a much warmer light. And the film was produced by Martin Scorsese. The film was produced by Martin Scorsese. Uh, he signed on to it as it was being done and he decided to uh, put money into it and help finish it. Uh, the film asks the question very simply, what is a father? What is a father? And uh, can a big lonely elephant be friends with a delicate little butterfly, with a delicate little butterfly? The film is so impressionistic without being overly dramatic. Uh, there's no big explosive scene in the film. It takes a very naturalistic approach to revealing the story. And the story really depends on the visual. This is what I call cinema. Uh, it, it requires very little dialogue, and most of the dialogue uh, comes, you know, comes out of Elsa's mouth. Uh, what a child! Uh, the kid is absolutely precious. Uh, you just want to, you just want to wrap her up and take her home at the end of the film. Uh, anyway, uh, but the story is all revealed visually. It depends on glances and gestures, uh, with a gentleness that's more observant of their exchanges than the mystery of who they are to each other. It's, it's, it's so interesting to watch uh, Antoine and Elsa and their little exchanges they go on, Antoine's looks. Uh, it, the film explores the concepts of, of nature, family, paternal and daughterly love, transmission, uh, of generations, protective instincts, intuition, and the suggestiveness of the imagination and the looking to heal the invisible wounds of the past. Uh, we have Antoine who shows up literally after five years at uh, Camille's doorstep, or at least we learn that he showed up. All of a sudden this character shows up at the door and I love it, you know, she's well, the first thing we see is we see Elsa under the bed. She's swimming out from under the bed into this wonderful little child's room with all her toys. And we're, we're given into a child's imagination. Uh, and, and most of the film is shot from her point of view. Uh, and we have Camille, her mother, and uh, from the outset, we see Camille is busy getting ready for her day. They're waiting for the babysitter to show up, who doesn't show up, Alga. Uh, and, and what's interesting is the film. So I guess, and this was for the sake of Elsa probably, or the actress who plays Elsa, her name is Alina Doyon, uh, was shot in chronological order. It was, it, you know, most films are not shot in chron chronological order. Sometimes they shoot the first scene last uh, and depending on what locations they can get uh, when sets are finished. But in this case, they shot it from beginning to end just that way. Uh, and it almost feels like they shot it in two days, even though they didn't. Uh, but we see them, uh, you know, uh, and Elsa and Antoine meet the first day of shooting and it's about 
the plot and what exists off camera in real life. Uh, this film takes place in the moment. We're not given to backstory. We pick up backstory, as I said, in the visuals. If we look at certain details, we can sort of put together who these people are and what they are to each other. Uh, but for a five-year-old, it's a special time in their lives. And the director, uh, Amelie Van Elms, wanted to capture the spontaneity, the fluidity, and the lack of awareness of the camera. I mean, she is totally, has no idea the camera's following her. Uh, I've never seen an actress like this that's totally unconscious of the camera. Uh, when we first see little Elsa, she, as I said, she, she's swimming from under the bed. And we, we begin to see transmission in the way she reacts. Uh, the magic is always in the telling. And uh, the best tales, like the story he tells her in bed that night, the elephant and the butterfly, are often the purest ones. And this is a pure and simple tale. Uh, we see how her world begins to expand. Uh, expressing her independence and her resistance and her resistance in her exchanges with Antoine, even with her mother at the beginning. Uh, the film stays entirely on what we consider that present moment. Uh, we are kept from elements of backstory, let alone having to find them out for ourselves concerning Antoine and Camille's failed relationship. We wonder what happened to these two. Why aren't they together? Uh, letting us draw our own conclusions, which in turn lets us form our own conclusions about this mysterious man who has been thrust into the life of a child he has never known. You know, we question right away. She trusts him. She puts her right into his hands. Take care of her until Alga comes. Then Alga doesn't show up and he's with this child, what does he do? Uh, but the fact that she trusts him already speaks volumes. I mean, when she originally sees him, she starts laughing. And then all of a sudden she slams the door in his face. Uh, you know, like now, get out of here. He starts to leave. We see uh, Elsa look at him through the window. We have no idea what she's saying but she seems to intuit. And this is what I mean by transmission. She's beginning to intuit things. And now when uh, this uh, Matisse shows up to take her to her next, uh, her partner, obviously, who we learn later, she has her own architect's office. So he was a partner to go off. And, and when he's calling it off for her to go, she runs out and she brings back Antoine and she thrusts, Elsa into his hands and says, just wait until Alga comes. He has a number. And as we see, Alga never comes. Uh, and we learn about Antoine through her eyes. It's all through her eyes. When he goes to see his mother in rehab, Elsa's playfulness and her empathy are displayed. I love it when she goes into that woman's room and she makes the exchange uh, for her lipstick. And then the next thing you know, she's putting the lipstick on the man in the chair, asleep in the chair. Uh, it's a trail of hilarious results that this child leaves behind uh, when they go to Antoine's apartment. Uh, it's then that we begin to see what this is all about. Uh, we see before, before we know it, you know, we see him cooking. We see how meticulous he is. Uh, when he sees Elsa with the knife, he yells at her, but I love it the way she says, why are you shouting at me? Would you like it if you were little and I shouted at you like that? Uh, this kid is beyond precocious. Uh, it's, it's, I think she's really a 35 year old midget. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she, she, uh, she, you know, and he teaches her to, now he's teaching her to cut the herbs. Uh, we learned that his father was a botanist. Uh, she's looking at the pictures of the plants. Uh, she's learning who this man is. She's looking around at who this man is. I mean, and during their introduction to the house, yes, they played, they danced, they wore the masks. So she's gotten to know him and she's gotten to trust him. Uh, and uh, he gets, 
you know, that evening he gets the phone call from Camille and, and watching her while he's on the phone and she's almost imitating her mother, you know, standing there with the sponge and she's, you know, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, it's just, it's terrific. Uh, and then he goes after she's asleep and that's where we start to really see what backstory is and why I say it's revealed visually. He takes the pictures out from that box and we're looking at Emily and him as young children. These are people who knew each other as young children. Uh, you know, we will later on see how close their families probably were, and also Antoine's problem with Camille's mother. Uh, but uh, when the next day, his brother shows up and he trusts his brother with her. Uh, you know, and you see, and I love it when the tour is changing, he's putting, he's putting the, the, uh, the nail polish and she's cracking up. It is just the naturalism in the film just takes us in. I mean, we get lost in this relationship with this little girl. Uh, she's leading us. She's leading us. Uh, you know, and finally he comes back, but we see where he goes. He's buying a restaurant. So now we know he's a chef. We know he's a chef and he's a very fair chef. He doesn't even question when the, the previous owner or whoever it is that's selling the restaurant says this woman has to come with it. And he says, naturally, uh, I wouldn't want to upset the garden. And we see him looking in that garden. And there is, again, we talk about transmission where else is concerned, we see transmission where Antoine is concerned from his father, how he looks at these herbs growing in his garden. Obviously, you know, this comes from parent to child. Uh, and then, and now, you know, he brings her to her grandmother. And, you know, the grandmother comes out and says hello to him as if she saw him yesterday. You know, she says, hi, Antoine. And then she says, but you can go now. I don't think it's a good idea if you stay. And she takes Elsa in. But now he drives away and he stops at that bar. And I love that scene. He's going through her little pocketbook. And he's looking at her little diary or whatever it is, this little book she's put together. And she, he sees the picture of her with that guy, Matisse, it looks like. And it says, it looks like it says he's taking the letters and he puts them in. It says, Papa or Pop. And he eats the photograph. He yeah. takes it, crumples it up and eats it, drinks it down with the beer. I mean, he's so jealous at this point. And he takes off and he goes back to the house and he literally kidnaps her. He goes around the side of the house. She's sitting there blowing bubbles. Says, you want to go to the beach? Yes. <laughs> and they're off on this adventure. And we're wondering, of course, we're wondering, wait a minute, this woman is going to find out that she's gone. And next thing you know, the police are going to be looking for them. Uh, which comes back to us a little later. Uh, but, you know, we see her resistance, her, her, her ability to take him in, you know, on the beach. And he's creating a story when he sits down at the beach with that woman. Oh, she's five years old. She's in first grade. The woman says she must be very bright. You know, he has no idea about school or anything else. Yes, she's even taking piano lessons. Uh, I mean, he's got, he's already, you know, he is a father. He's becoming a father. He doesn't even know it at this point. Uh, and uh, then finally they go on the boardwalk and she wants the bicycle with the, 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 whatever it is with the unicorn. He says, no, we'll get the blue one. It's cheaper. And she just stands there when he sees the other girl get on. It's, we don't have to see what happened. This is, these are one of these wonderful ellipses in film. He just looks at her, she stares at him, and next thing you know, they're riding that one down the boardwalk. Uh, that's what we call a great ellipsis in film. We don't have to know what ensued. Uh, and, and, when the, and then finally, when he's taking her home back to his, his apartment, he says he immediately calls up uh, Camille. And we see this guy still isn't thinking. He leaves, she's sleeping and she's in the car and he gets outside the car and he's calling Camille and he's not even thinking, wait, I left her in the car. It's Camille that reminds him. But she says, I didn't call the police and her mother didn't call the police. So he was reacting to a situation which wasn't even related to him. He's so paranoid at that point. Uh, 
uh, and, and figures out, okay, it wasn't. And the next thing you know, we're going to, uh, they're walking off and, and he has another conversation with her that he'll meet her the next day. And uh, where are they going? They're walking through the woods. I mean, this thing has a, a little bit of a fairy tale attitude to it, the way he's taking it through the woods and they wind up at his mother's home. Uh, and we see his, his brother and sister-in-law who she sees and greets and his other, his sister uh, and his mother. And I love it when his mother looks at him and says, she's beautiful. She looks like you. And it's about time. It's about time. Uh, and we don't know what that phrase means yet, but we'll find out in a minute. And then finally, Camille shows up and, uh, you know, she comes in and they know her. And the sister greets her like she, the same way the grandmother greeted Antoine, like they saw her yesterday. It's been five years that these people have been separated, but they're treating, they're treating them like they, they've always been there. And uh, they have this little party. And finally, Camille breaks down and, and says to him, you knew, you didn't even contact me, but you knew. And we're getting the feeling of what happened. But it's interesting that the mother, uh, Antoine's mother makes the comment to her, or I think it was the sister, one of them about, so how is business? And she says, I have, you know, that she had a career. So are we to understand that the two of them had careers that were more important to them, that he left because of that? Who knows? But we're building a story here. And she breaks down in his arms. And now they walk off together. And uh, I love that scene at the gas station when he's chasing her around the car and, and says to her, you know, he says, I have a secret. I want to tell you. She says, well, if it's a secret, why do you want to tell me? She says, but I have a secret I want to tell you. And it turns out to be the same secret. Uh, and she just gives him the way she gives him a kiss. I mean, he's melted. We've melted at that point. Uh, and I think Camille also is melted. And I think we're seeing what will become a family, what will become, whether or not they get together, they will be a family. Uh, or possibly the resurrection of these two getting back together. Who knows? Who knows? But it's just, it's just wonderful. I have to tell you, the production design of the film immediately establishes the details of Camille and Elsa's intersecting lives, putting across their distinct personalities. Uh, later, we see Antoine's home, and we can immediately observe the different priorities that may have contributed to the breakdown of their relationship. As I was saying, each one has their priorities. Camille is an architect bent on a career. Antoine is a chef. Uh, he's surrounded by it. Uh, their apartments are very different. Mm -hmm. uh, the cinematography is wonderful. The lighting, the framing uh, brings out all the richness and the details that Elsa sees in the world. I mean, she's an observant child and we're seeing everything she's observing. We're seeing life through her eyes. The camera captures the spontaneity of what's happening because everything is happening in the moment. Uh, this, is, this is what's wonderful is you feel, especially the way Elsa behaves in the film, as if everything is happening for the first time. I mean, how do you get a five-year-old to rehearse and memorize lines like this? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, and, and uh, the, you know, this, this fluidity and lack of awareness of, of her of with, and without being aware of that camera. Uh, Elsa knows how the story goes, but also wants to have fun along the way. It's like she's suspect or she's suspecting everything that's going on, but she's having fun. She wants to have fun with this. Antoine, who lacks the protective instinct of a parent because he's never had it before, begins to understand who she is and discovers the essence of that joy of being a parent, not imposing his taste on her. I mean, I love the scene when he cooks the meal for her and he makes up the plate and presents it to her and she looks at it. He says, you can even eat the flour. And she takes the flour and she's good, it's good. 
uh, the, the, and and as I said, the scene concerning a choice to the the, the quadricycle, uh, the music in the film. Uh, this is a this is a, a world famous composer. Uh, he composed the, the soundtracks uh, for the films The Big Sick, uh, Bridesmaids. Uh, his score matches the film's rhythm note for note. It's childish, it's playful, it's wonder. Uh, he really, really creates a wonderful film score. Uh, the actress who plays Camille, her name is Judith Chelma. Uh, Chelma. Uh, she's a stage and film actress. She's one of France's fastest rising talents. Uh, she came to prominence in 2016. Uh, where she was nominated for a French Academy Award for a performance in a, in a film entitled A Woman's Life, A Woman's Life, uh, a film that takes place in the early 18th century. Uh, Thomas Blanchard, uh, who plays Antoine, has been working steadily in film and on stage since graduating from the National Conservatory of Dramatic Art in Paris since 1980. He's been acting for the last 42 years. He began as a young man. And Lena Doyon, who plays Elsa, uh, she's done about eight films before. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's <laughs> never act she's never acted before. But the great thing about her is she is the director's daughter. She's the oh. director's daughter. Oh. And, and she was born. The director had a relationship with an actor that, that wasn't interested in being a father. And she raised that she's been raising her on her own. She's been raising her on her own. Oh, and so this has elements of, of biography. their own story. It has elements of their wow. own story together. Uh, so there you have it uh, in a nutshell. And now I'd like to open it up for conversation. Anybody who would like to join in, uh, you know, you you uh, in 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 the reactions, you can raise your hand, uh, a little hand. I could see you if you you will have a comment, a question, or if you're on screen, I'll be glad to call on you. I saw uh, Linda. I saw you first, and Paul and Dresha. Okay, Linda. Uh, I thought to sum it up, it's really a beautiful bonding of a child with a parent. Yes. Yes, it is absolutely wonderful. You know, a parent that she didn't know uh, right. and suspects and suspects, but how she attaches herself to everyone in the film. Yeah. When his brother shows up, you know, who are you? She's the first there. She interrogates, who are you? When she, you know, even with Antoine, when he starts to get huffy, she takes out the microphone and she starts to uh, interview him. Uh, I mean, she is... She is reactive. She she sees things in the world and she observes them and she absorbs them, and then feeds it back to us. Uh, you know through her behavior. It's wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Paula. Yeah, this is kind of off the track, but when the move movie started, I had no idea it was such a beautiful, kind movie. And when I started to see Antoine taking care of her and putting her to bed, I was holding my breath that it shouldn't be anything sexual or anything, you know, that. Yeah. And I hated myself later that I thought that, but I guess it's the world we live in. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that was my first fear, thank he, God. He, it, it, it's a very real look, he, his brother comes in. You know, if you if we judge by appearance and we judge right. by, you know, we see his brother come in and we talk, he's leaving with his brother. You right. know, you, you have to, you know, one would you will have a reaction. But then you say, wait a minute. You know, if 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 we trust him, if she trusted him, if we trust him, we have yeah. to trust what he's doing. I mean, yeah. but yes, I mean, it, it is the world we live in, but it's 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 wonderful. And that's the reason the less, you know going into this film, the better off you are, because you, you know, don't have judges, let it all happen. And you see this wondrous thing happening before your nice. eyes with this child. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Dresia. You. Uh, I, 
I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a, a, a an excellent story. Um, and the character that, that played Elsa, the little girl that played Elsa, made the whole thing. Her, her, I mean, I was just in awe of this child and her spontaneity and her just, and her reactions. And everything came, everything came across as so natural. Um, I, you know, if we, a different, a, a different character, if a different personality, let's put it that way, a different personality, and it would have been just a movie. But, but her, uh, her abilities, if you will, really took it into a completely different dimension that I just thought was, was really exquisite. You know, I mean, I, 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 there were times that I definitely, I mean, like when he, the brother walked in, I'm figuring this schlep, he's going to take care of a child. You know? <laughs> and then it turns out that he, that he was a, like a really good guy, a solid person. His wife is pregnant, you know? So again, it's that judging, um, which has been mentioned, but she, I mean, she just was extraordinary. And she's, she really is five. Oh uh, yeah, when she made the film, yeah, she was five years old. Unbelievable! Just, I mean, adorable, just precious. Yeah, yeah. She, she. I mean, it, it is, it is. You know, it's, it's a testament. You know, I, I. This relationship with her mother and her must be incredible. You know, she's a director, and here she, you know, wants to direct her own daughter, uh, and to direct her without being conscious of the camera is incredible yeah, really. uh, at that age. Usually they'll stare at the camera, they'll play to the camera. No, she's playing to the people. Uh, it's the film, the film, and that's the reason I chose it. The film is a gem. Uh, I discovered it and, and I've always, I always love showing it to an audience and not telling them too much going in and hoping that they, they don't uh, you know, know anything going in and just let the story unfold. I mean, this is what cinema is all about. You know, to surprise us, uh, to to challenge us, and it does challenge us because we have no idea what's happening here, and mm -hmm. until we things are revealed to us and and revealed in little pieces, in little pieces. Thank you, Dresia. Uh, Elise. Um. So I have a comment and I have a question. Um. Sure. I remembered the title. I think you had recommended this film during COVID. And I remember that it was such a sweet film, but I needed to familiarize myself. So I watched it again. And it truly was, you know, like when you see films, you know, or, or read a book, you know, another time you see things that you didn't notice the first time. So I loved it again. It was absolutely wonderful. And so I did some researching after this movie because I wanted to look up the actors and you know I also saw that the little girl who played Elsa was the director's uh, daughter yeah. um, but the the man who is actually her father I believe is a director also yes and yes his name is Doyon uh, right. she has her father's name yes right and she has four stepsisters mm -hmm. And they all have a different mother. So he's made his way around. You yes, know, yeah. Actresses. I, like that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hey, they're French. Is, what can I say? Yeah, <laughs> well, right, right, right. I just thought that was pretty interesting. But my question is, do, do we know whether or not she actually had to um, memorize these lines or or do you know whether or not they she they she was allowed to improvise and then you know they would cut and paste and and put everything in because like we've all said she is so natural yeah you know? yeah uh they do they do uh, children at that age are very very they make great actors if they're if they're open and they do they make great actors i've worked with children i know uh and you feed them lines uh, and they just come back at you. If you, you know, you talk to them, some of it will be improvised, but some of it, you know, uh, the scene, to take one scene uh, at the end when they're running around the car, I mean, that's, that's rehearsed. Uh, she has to rehearse that. You know, they don't want to running off to the side there. Uh, you know, they, they have to contain things. And yes, they rehearse certain things, certain actions. Uh, and and they, they keep the lines simple. You know, her lines are very simple. 
Uh, so they keep things saying, you know, who are you? And and you're putting it, I, I, I the scene with the nail polish, I believe was improvised. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain scenes you feel are improvised. We might be surprised to find that they're not, but they're, that that's the beauty of it, is to feel that they're improvised, that it's all happening uh, for the first time. So it's a good question. It's a good question. One that's really hard to answer, really hard to answer. But, but thank you know you. everything, so I thought you might you might no have no I don't know everything. <laughs> I'd like to know everything, but no. <laughs> At least where you. film is concerned, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank no, you. No, but Elise. it was a wonderful, wonderful film. Yeah. Terrific, terrific. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, uh, Gottlieb, yes. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm not Sarah. Well, I'm not here. Sarah's here, but I'm Sarah's husband, Ronnie. <laughs> okay. Okay, anyway. Ronnie. Go ahead. Um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful film, and it's, it's, it's a, of course, a pleasure to actually see an adult film. Adult, I mean, the fact that it starred a child is irrelevant. It's a mature right. adult film, not just the normal garbage <laughs> that's, that you don't even want to look at. But um, I, what I found, the point I want to make is something I found very interesting is that, um, you know, what, one of the commenters made, said something about, you know, and being a father, the truth is, of course, he was a biological father. He was the farthest thing from a parent that he could possibly be. Because you know, mm -hmm. one minute before he had come to the house, if he had seen her at the, you know, at the Champs Elysees, he wouldn't know it was his daughter or one of a million other children. He had no clue. Who right. She was. So it's very interesting. Uh, and of course, we don't really know why they didn't get together. But what I found fascinating was in today's world, unfortunately, a lot of people who make light of the need of a father in a relationship. I mean, that, that's not to take away anything from single mothers or anything, but the point is in our culture, you know, fathers have unfortunately, whether it's in TV movies or just in life have been made less and less important. And I thought it was very nice. I, I really liked the fact that by the end of the film, obviously he was very important in her. Not only was she important to him, but the, she wanted a father and she wanted to mm -hmm. love her father. And, uh, you know, irregardless of what happened before that, that was very heartwarming to me. I, I'm just very happy that that's the way it ended. Good. Yes, it, it, it's, it's true. I mean, this, this film is not just about, you know, being becoming a father, you know, and now he becomes a father. Uh, and there are other films that explore that, that explore that. Uh, but we also see the formation, hopefully, of a family. It's also the creation of a family. You know, today families come in all different shapes, yep. forms, and sizes. Yep. And I think we have to respect that and understand, you know, the beauty of the formation of a family and how important it is. Uh, and and it's funny, you know, you, you make the comment of, you know, he has he doesn't have the slightest idea what it is to be a father, yet we were all children and we yep. all hopefully knew a father. And you know, so you sort of feel there's got to be some transmission there somewhere and yeah, and, and yeah go ahead i think you make a good point because in his case he 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 made it very clear that he he really looked up to his father apparently yes. his father had a big influence on him you know i mean look he's carrying on and he just keeps his father's work and he you know yes yeah, so clearly his father had a very positive influence on him we don't know what kind of father he was but he certainly looked mm -hmm. up to him Yes, 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 Shelly? agreed. Shelly? Yes, who's calling me? I am. Shelly? Hi, this well, wait, is... wait, wait, we got, we got people raising hands. I will get to you. Who's calling me? <laughs> you have to show your face for me to recognize you. I don't, know uh, to, I don't know how to do that. How do I show my face? Is that Virginia? <laughs> yes. All right, hold on one minute, Virginia. Barbara Tate, and then Virginia. I am. Well, I was watching the movie more than once. I thought, oh, my God, some American is going to want to remake this film and it, it's going to be awful. <laughs> which is why which is why Martin Scorsese produced it. He will prevent any American from making it. <laughs> Good, because you just knew it was going to be just, you know, wrong, just maudlin, just not delicate, not uh It'll be it'll be Hollywood, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's and it's it's as you said, you watch it, you watch it more than once, which you know, and Elise gets back to what you were saying. You had seen it before. I always tell you, you you can't see a film once. You know, the first time you see a film, you watch it, 
The second time you see it uh, and you will see it again and again, uh, but you have to see a film to really begin to understand it uh, and, and see the details, see what's being done. You know, you can't absorb it all the first time. You're so busy watching the characters or trying to listen to dialogue or read the subtitles. And as you, you know, watch it again, you will see all those details. Uh, okay, Virginia? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Um, this is my first time on, and I just got the email, and I just registered today. So I have not seen the movie. How can I see it? Uh, do you get, well, are you a member of the library? No, and, and I don't know how. Where are you <laughs> physically? Aventura. Aventura. Uh, are you a member of, the, are you a library member? Of the Aventura Library. I don't know, is that Broward? I have no, no idea. Not Broward, and hey. what I suggest is that you contact the librarians at the Sterling Road Library <laughs> and discuss it with them because we view it on Canopy and Canopy is something that anybody who is a Broward, the, the Broward County Library, you know, library yeah. card holder has access to. Miami-Dade does not work with canopy but the librarians will possibly be able to help you that way i i will also i will give you another hint if if i may uh do you have amazon virginia i have netflix no it's on amazon it's available on amazon it is Yes, it is. I just looked. Hey, it's available on Amazon. Ginny, this is Judy Borger. Um, I can give you the information, but it, it is on Prime. It's free on Prime. Yes. But they have commercials. That's okay. Oh, it's in the commercial zone. Well, it's okay. Ginny, get in touch with me. I'll, I'll give you the information. Okay, because yeah. I've heard about this before and about joining, and I never knew how to do it. Or Claire can give you the information. All right, well, okay. we hope that you join either the library, but especially join the friends. And um, we would look forward to having you become a friend of the library with us. Okay, so, so Judy, you can send me the information about how to join. And then I'll I can, but I don't have your information. So when I see you next, you'll give it to me. You could put it into the <laughs> chat. If you go on the chat, you could find her and send it to her. Uh, okay, now getting back to our regularly scheduled program, uh, Rachel. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a wonderful movie also. Um, and also, I just also, I love foreign movies because they are so much more delicate than our American version of any movie. I agree with the person that said this, that um, because it's just so sweet of a story and it's told with nonverbal cues and not a lot of dialogue. <laughs> we have way too much dialogue in our American movies when it deals with a subject like this so delicate. I don't think we do it right a lot of times. We overdo it. Like we have to hit somebody okay. over the head to know what's going on. And you really didn't. We all knew what was going on here. And also, I like the analogy of the elephant and the butterfly. Yes. It was about their relationship. It was just that, you know, he, in a way, it looked like he had kind of not, he had family members and things like that, but he didn't have his own family unit. Exactly. It seemed like. He was so excited to cook for her, and he cooked. Come on and have this discussion. And he he had like it was so cool because he cooked a dinner that was really for an adult. I mean, you know, this is a five year old kid, uh, and he cooked with flowers on it and all this other stuff because he was so happy to have somebody to cook like this for at his own place, and mm -hmm. so. It was just beautifully done, you know, and subtly. And I, I really enjoyed it too. So thank you for choosing it, Shelley. 
My pleasure, Rachel. Thank you. And thank you for bringing that up about the, the, the use of dialogue because there is a great director. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of him. His name is Jean-Luc Godard. And he said a long time ago, he said, dialogue is the enemy of cinema. Dialogue is the enemy of cinema. And when we think about it, it can be, it can be. Okay, let's see who's next there. Uh, I've got up on the board here, Matthew. Hi, it's Nora. Oh, okay, hi Nora, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I thought the movie was bittersweet. Um, oh. the, the scenes were sweet, but I, I thought they kept trying to show a man who was a good man who made a very big mistake. And, 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 and that's the way I viewed it. He, he missed out on the whole, on the first five years of his daughter's life, but he wasn't a bad person. He was a good person. He had a mother, he had siblings, he had a business. And, and I, I think that's what they were trying to show that good people make mistakes. Yeah, I mean, yes, but also they can correct, they can hopefully, you know, make up for them. They can hopefully come back and, you know, start to figure things out. Uh, you know, in this case, he, he, as I said, to me, it seemed like he was busy trying to launch his own career. She was busy trying to launch her career. Uh, and But he never contacted her. He made a mistake. You're absolutely right. Uh, well, and now he has to make good on it. Uh, what do you... What do you think he was going to say when he came to her door? Uh, maybe, I'm sorry I didn't contact you before. I don't know. Uh, hopefully the right thing. Whatever it is, the right thing. Uh, I think he wanted to come into her life. I think he wanted to know who the child was. Uh, I think he was, he was preparing himself. I, I think he was getting a business nearby and he was coming back to town. Yeah, I mean, he might have been away, yes, and, and he was coming back. Uh, and I think that's why he wanted to reconnect. But I think mm -hmm. he definitely wanted to connect to this child uh, and to her. Uh, yeah. I mean, there was obviously a lot there, uh, especially in the end when she breaks down to him. Uh, you could see, and he grabs her around. He realized what he has to do. Uh, and the three of them walking off together with her on his shoulders, uh it seemed like okay something they're moving forward they're moving yes, forward for sure yeah. thank you nora okay mr farber <laughs> hey shelly how are you good how are you <clears throat> good uh linda and i love this movie and the thing that's really interesting about it is that in a very subtle way it's very enigmatic and it is layered in a very subtle and enigmatic way. You can't watch this movie and not just fall in love with Elsa. I mean, she's your lover. Uh, you, like, yeah. like you said before, you just want to pack her up and take her home. I mean, this you just love her and you spend the whole movie loving her. Yet it's not until you the movie's over that you start thinking about it. And you don't so much think about Elsa but at least we didn't, we were thinking about him, uh, the father. And the father becomes this enigmatic guy who when you think about what's been, what happened in the last five years, firstly, she, she says to him, you knew and you didn't do anything. Well, that implied that she didn't tell him about her. Mm -hmm. If he knew that she had somebody, it, it was not because he she told him about her. So you have to think that maybe she never told him about her mm -hmm. since she was surprised that he knew. And you have to ask, why is that? Why didn't she tell him about her? Is there something was there something about him or was there something about her? So when you think about him, then you think about those couple of instances where people were saying he didn't know how to be a father, but you don't really know how, have to know how to be a father to do the things that he didn't do. You don't leave a kid in the car. I mean, it no. doesn't take a father not to leave a kid in the car to know that that's, that's wrong. Uh, it doesn't take a father to, you know, to, to know not, not to do those things. When he was leaving, uh, when he left her with uh, the brother and he was leaving and he was just walking out and the brother who didn't have a child yet, 
He's not a father yet. He says to him, you can't leave without saying goodbye to her. You got to say something to her. So it's, there was something more about him that's off than just not being a father. And maybe it's those, whatever those things are that's off about him, which was the reason that she didn't tell him about her, the daughter. And then the final question that you have to ask is, so what's he doing there now? Why today? Why is it on this day? Why not a year ago? Why not a year from now? What is it that brings him to the door now? And you have to say, I don't know, but the fact that I'm thinking about this and Linda and I are talking about this and we're trying to figure out about this guy when it's so subtly not about him, but about the daughter. And yet you walk away just thinking about him. And to Linda and I, that was one of the great things about this movie, that this subtle en enigma uh, that's not batting you over the head yet. That's what you're thinking about when it's all said and done. Interesting, interesting take. Uh, I agree. You know, it's it's and that's that's to me is always the mystery in a film. And it's it's, you know, another great director. His name was Jean Renoir uh, in, in the uh, he worked from the, the 20s up to the 60s. And he said it best. He said uh, everybody has their reasons. Everybody in a film, in a story, everybody has their reasons. And we're always forced to think, what were their reasons? Uh, and the reasons aren't always evident, especially in this film. And as you say, you know, you think about him. Yes, what was it? Look, for all intents and purposes, he could have been in prison for five years. We don't know where he was. Uh, but the fact that he, he really was insensitive to knowing what it means, you know, to take care of a child, which he didn't know, uh, is the fact that he had to grow up. You know, maybe this is all about growing up. Uh, you know, sometimes the child, in this case, the child is the mother to the man, is the child is leading him. Uh, and that's what we're looking at here is a child who's teaching him how to be a parent or how to be sensitive. Uh, to who she is, to who a child, to what a child is. Uh, he was a child. Uh, and that's what I think may have been part of this, uh, was his immaturity. Uh, and, and we don't know what her reasons were. Again, we don't know why she, why didn't she get in touch with him? If she said, you knew, did she, why did she not get in touch? But it seems like the parents knew. Uh, I mean, his mother said it's about time. Uh, you know, so obviously his mother must have known. Uh, it did, and, and so everybody involved seemed to know things except him uh, is the way we look at it. And, uh, but he, did, he probably did know and they probably were egging him on the whole time. Who knows? Who knows? It's one of the mysteries of life. You know, everybody leads an individual life and we never know what those reasons are. As I say, why is the six foot woman with the three foot man? I have no idea, but they're in love, but they're in love. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's a question. It's a good question. It's a challenging one. And I think it's, it, you, you bring it out very eloquently. Thank you. Uh, Dreja? You got to unmute, Dreja. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I was listening to the comments and it just, it kind of made me think about it that how many times I've, I've uh, finished watching a movie and it was like, that's it? I'm like, that's <laughs> it? Because there were so many, so many like either loose ends or unanswered things. And this movie actually left so much unanswered and raised so many questions as evidenced by the conversation that's taking place now. And yet it felt complete. You know, I, I, it, it just felt, it felt complete. Everything was there that, that needed to be there to convey, you know, the, the story. Um, and yeah, it's like, well, what happened before and what happened after and where are they going and da, da, and what did he do and why did all there, all of those things. And yet it feels complete. And that's really mm -hmm. interesting. That's it's a, it's a re really interesting. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, think about the the very last scene is she singing him a little song, 
uh, will you be my little house? Will you be my little house? You know, it's, it's, it, it is complete, but it's not complete because, but we feel hopeful. You know, we feel hopeful. We feel we've seen people coming together. We see something being built. Uh, and, you know, it will, we, we do want to hope. Uh, we do, you know, we saw a beautiful little story about a beautiful little child and two parents who are coming together. And I think that's, you know, the bonding and the creation. Uh, it's a creation story. It really is. And it is complete. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Hock. Hi. I just want to say he did give an explanation. Remember when she was questioning him, but he could barely get it out. And it was just one <laughs> word. He said timing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I kind of yeah. got the impression that he had left her in the relationship and didn't even know that she was expecting. And then she was gone. And since he had already gone, she just didn't tell him and then because she wanted to know what did what were you going to say when you came to my door and then he just stammered and he, he couldn't come up with anything other than just timing yeah so, i mean it's an interesting you know, it's, he just it's, wasn't right. ready he wasn't ready at the time he, he wasn't ready he was obviously building a career i mean being a chef is not an easy thing as we know today mm -hmm. uh it's a tough it's a tough profession demanding uh, all you have to do is watch a show on, on Hulu called The Bear, and you'll realize what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's, yes, it's, it's, uh, that's, it's great that you brought that up. It was timing. It is time. And it is now what life is about timing. Right. My life is about timing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Paula. Yeah, in Antoine's defense about being a father, <laughs> there's, there's no real lesson that men and even women, but they're more maternal, that men um, have when they have a baby. So perhaps if he had been with her from day one, it would have evolved that he really knew how to take care of her. But to step in cold with a five-year-old it's a it's a big task. So yes, I just is. wanted to defend him a little bit. Oh, okay, that's terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah Gottlieb. Well, what about the character of Camille? I mean, she she slams the door on this guy's face. We have to assume that she hasn't been in touch with him for five years. Maybe she told him about the pregnancy, maybe she did, we don't really know but he's there to do something. She slams the door in his face and five minutes later, she's leaving her child with him. I mean, what does that tell us about Camille? That was well, very disturbing to me. It was yeah, well, just for the purposes of the storyline? No, no, it's, it's, it gets revealed. See, that's what I like about a film and why I choose a film because visually this all gets revealed along the way. When, and, and it's revealed later on, the, the fact is, she trusts him. There, there is a history between them. And that history comes out of that little box that he opens up. And he's looking at the photographs. And he's looking at a photograph of her as a child and him as a child. And he's holding them together. And all we can, what we can begin to suspect, and we have to uh, accept certain things, is that, and it, later on, also through family, we see it, is that this relationship went on for a long time. Uh, they knew each other probably since they were children uh, and because he knew her mother and he was he was not happy with her mother when he when he says, no, oh, you want me to talk to your mother? And then there's his mother. And when when she arrives at the house, it's they don't blink an eye uh, when she walks in. The sister, his sister says, oh, hi, Camille, help me with this. You know, putting her right into work. She goes into the kitchen. She's doing the dishes. I mean, these are people that know each other. There's a history here. And, and we have to accept. Sometimes you have to suspend your disbelief uh, and accept certain things that are happening and understand, okay, I'll go along with this. There must be, there must be a long history between these two because she accepts. She goes out. She pulls them back off the street. And she said, and actually she said, just watch it till the, just watch it till the babysitter gets here. Mm. The babysitter doesn't get there. And they're arguing over the phone anyway, but they're talking to each other like they know each other. Like that five years dissolved. 
as soon as he showed up. And now he's thrust back into it. He's coming back into her life uh, as if, you know, she knows who he is. So I, you know, we have to suspend disbelief that he didn't commit any crimes during those five years. He didn't, his personality certainly didn't change. Uh, and she can certainly evince a certain amount of trust in who he is, in who I he is. I have to say, initially, when I watched the show last night, I did say, is that all there is? <laughs> What's up to that? I did. And I yeah. wanted the characters of Camille and of Antoine to be flushed out. I needed more details. I needed more about their history and all of that. But now as we're having this conversation and it was the director's deliberate choice not to give us any of this, I had no idea this was based on her own personal history. I have no idea what relationship she has with the father of her daughter. Um, but now that you say that, now I can look at it in a different perspective, and I appreciate that, so thank you. It's my pleasure, and that's what's refreshing about cinema, is that when a director takes those chances and gives us a story where we're spoon-fed, you know, somebody mentioned, you know, that if Hollywood got a hold of this, it would be, it would be more, it might be more than it might not go the way this went. And that's because you have a director that's taking chances that her audience is intelligent enough uh, to look at the film, to look at the details, to pick up things. Uh, and that's why I say, you know, the first time you're just watching it, the second time you'll see it. You will see these things. You look for them. You look for them. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Bonnie. Okay, I, I agree with everyone. I loved the film. I thought it was fabulous. And it was all coming together for this wonderful, like, like you said, it seemed to me it was going to have a happy ending. But the one little comment that, that bugged me was when they shared their secret when they were running around at the, at the gas station. And she told him and he told her that he has the same secret. But then he says, but we don't have to tell anybody. It's just going to be our little secret. So that kind of bothered me a little bit about but maybe uh -huh. now that, that we've been talking about it tonight maybe that's just his way of like you know saying to her well we're, we have our little secret but that kind of I was like does this mean he's not going to move forward openly as her father or or that kind of bothered me a little bit uh well it's 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 interesting that you pick you pick up on that uh but I think you know that's that is a question that hangs in the air because in the end, as I said, she's singing that little song, you know, will you be my house? She's asking a question, will you be my little house? Mm -hmm. And he just looks, you know, and he has to think about what he's getting himself into. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not wrong, you know, now is the challenge for him. Right. Am I really ready for all of this? Exactly. You know, this is what he has to face. So yes, that's a very human thing that you're asking is, is right now is maybe he's saying, Let's keep it between us. Yeah. And maybe the next day he's going to say, okay, now I'm willing to open up. You yeah. know, we don't know. But that's yeah. that's interesting. See, you picked up on a detail. You yeah. picked up on a detail. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Marilyn. Hi. I love the discussion, Shelley. The discussion has been an eye-opener, and it's great. Right from the beginning, Paula, I so agreed with you. I was at the edge of my seat, as I said to Linda and Mindy today when we had coffee. I was waiting for something to happen, and, and it must be because of where we are in, in, our, in our life now, and I was like, released a sigh of relief at the end when nothing horrible happened and it was just a beautiful movie. We so needed something like this. So this was great. The one thing that I saw that hasn't been brought up and unless I saw it wrong, when um, the little girl went to the grandmother, Camille's mother, to that grandmother, she was not happy. I, I didn't see that she ran in and wanted to be, did I miss something? No, it just mean the opposite, Marilyn. I mean, she said, no, 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 I don't want to go. She didn't want to go in. Yeah. So that's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah. She didn't that, want that to go the, in. That's what I'm saying. This is, yeah, this is the very every other of the person, film. To every other person, she was 
open her it. mother, her and, mother. and yes. to her own grandmother she said i didn't want to go in unless i saw that wrong yeah. that was very no, no you you're raising you're raising a good point i mean this is this is again one of those little mysteries that they're setting up you know she's probably maybe she's strict maybe she's you know there there are things going on there that she doesn't enjoy being there uh you know when when um uh, when Antoine shows up, she's sitting outside blowing bubbles. Uh, she's left on her own, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, and, and Antoine just picks her up and leaves. Uh, you know, we don't know what the situation is there. Uh, you know, I, it, just it, wonder, it's, I wonder, is this the mother that Antoine doesn't like? Yeah, this is what he was saying to her. Oh, your mother, okay. I got to oh, call yeah. your mother. Yeah. You know, yes. did your mother call the cops? You right. know, it's 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 yes. This is that's so who perhaps she's talking the about. child's behavior was radiating radiating off his negativity. Yes, yes, possibly, possibly, yes. Interesting, Linda. You had a comment about that? Uh, yeah, a couple things. Uh, one, she could have been uh, had to go to her grandmother's a lot through the last five years because if the mother didn't have any other support and she's having so much fun with Antoine, you know. So she doesn't want to go there. So it doesn't have to be a negative feeling toward a grandmother. I think just that she prefers what's going on now, possibly. But then the other comment I wanted to make, though, is that I, when we keep talking about how little backstory we had and how little we know knew, I think if we would have had a backstory, let's say if we knew that he had taken off on her, you know, and then just broke up with her and all that, it would have been harder for us to root for him, you know, as as he's. Um, uh, developing the relationship with this child, you know, was just like so easy to to you know to be in his court and to uh, do that. And then the mother in the beginning, we only see her being angry and rushed and everything. And and the director let us be on the you know Antoine side totally until at the end when she broke down and cried. And you could you could think back what she'd gone through being a single parent for five years. But I think it was a whole lot easier for us to like him without knowing why he's been that, away five. That's a great comment. And what you're doing now is you're getting into story structure. When a director sits down and structures a story, now she may have thrown all of this in. A good director, what they do is they, they will do as much as they can around the story. Then they start to pull out things. Then they mm -hmm. start to take away things. And it's also about hard trusting the audience. You know, one thing we have to do is trust our audience. And and if we, yes, if we want to develop empathy for the characters, sometimes the less we know, the better off we are, is to watch their action within the moment. And as I said at the beginning, this is a film that takes place entirely in the moment. It's not about the past. It's not, a, it's, it's certainly not about the future. It's about what's happening in front of us. And yeah. yes, we're forced to judge. And it's refreshing, though, when we're not presented and hit over the head with information that we have to bother ourselves with uh, and try and, and, and just look at the people as who they are in front of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it's not about judging. It's about watching. It's about seeing. It's about seeing. So terrific. Thank you. Uh, Elise? So I just wanted to make a comment about um, what uh, Bonnie had talked about with the, the conversation about the secrets, you know, that they were going to yes. keep. I cheered for Antoine. I thought that was such a great response that he gave because it wasn't up to him to tell Elsa what happened. I think that was something that he and Camille should converse about together and then go and speak to Elsa about it. So that was my take on that segment of the film that's so. also interesting pickup uh see that's why i say you know this this is open to interpretation yeah you know yeah. film film itself is a subjective medium you know as, as other people have said we judge we tend to judge people by the way they look we tend to judge people and therefore you know and then we find out we made the wrong judgment you know you look at somebody like you said his brother comes in like a schlep and Yet he's so warm and tender with her. You know, he's doing her nails and they're laughing together. Uh, you know, and, and he's, we learn, you know, with that, we, we and it's it, intent, it, the intent of the director there is for us to 
you know, I'm going to force them to think about who this guy is. And then you see his wife come in and she's pregnant. And, uh, you know, now we know what's going on. Uh, we see this, this, what's happening here. All these people love the girl. I mean, they love her. That's, that's the really important thing that goes on in here. Uh, okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, yeah, Arlene. Arlene. Yes. I just want to say, I don't know who the person was that just said before about there's no book about how to be a father or whatever she was saying because he didn't do the right things or did the right things and didn't know the wrong things. There's no book about him being a mother as well. So you learn from your experiences. Mm -hmm. And the director showed that he learned from what he did with the little girl or what his mother did to him. I don't know that part, but I thought it was a fantastic movie. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you. Yes, you well, you knew that these families, first of all, also, there was a, a visual hint that these these families, the houses, if right. you look at the houses, the mother lived in, though both mothers lived in, they were beautiful homes, uh, you know, and, and so, you know, we, we, we get a little information about these families just by looking at the with the, the, the family homes that they were probably brought up in and we do see you know he cares about his mother uh you know can't my brother go can't my sister go no so he goes uh so there's responsibility uh here uh we do learn and you learn through experience you're absolutely right you have to you know experience something and hopefully you learn right look she taught him when he yelled at her about the knife, she Absolutely. said, if you were little, would you like me to shake, you know? And he looks at her and the next thing you know, he's teaching her how to cut. He's teaching her how to use a knife. Well, if you're gonna pick up a knife, know how to use it, uh, you know? And, and so, I, yes, it's learning by experience. Good comment, good comment. Anyone else out there? Anyone else have anything they'd like to add? No, no? well. The next movie. Yes, that's exactly where I was going. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, the next the next film is on the 22nd, uh, two weeks, uh, and it's entitled The Bicycle Thieves. I am taking you back some Ooh. 50, 70 years oh to one God. of the great classics, one of the great classics of cinema. Uh, it is one of my favorite films. It is a film that spawned uh, that was part of a filmmaking movement. Well, some people call it a movement. Some people call it a trend. It was called neorealism. It lasted as a movement for about seven years in Italy. It arose out of Italy. I will explain then what it came from uh, and how the film was made. Uh, but it's uh, Vittorio De Sica is the director. It's the story of a man who needs work and he can only get that work if he has a bicycle. And on the first day on the job, the bicycle is stolen. Uh, and then he, his son, he and his son take a three-day odyssey to try and find the bicycle. And you will see what ensues. Uh, it is a marvelous film. Uh, I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, I've, I've lectured a great deal on this film. I will break it down for you uh, in, in different scenes and formats. And, what the seeker did uh, to make this, uh, it is a miraculous film. Uh, one in which Nobel Prize winners have weighed in on uh, as being one of the great works of cinema. Uh, but we'll get there in two weeks. So I will look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, thank you for attending this thank evening. You. It's great to see all of you and have a good two weeks. Have thank a good you. two thank weeks. You. I'll see you thank soon. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Really good discussion. Thank you. Great, just great. Shelly, this was an amazing discussion. Yep, well, it shows it's you the simplest film. of films. It's an amazing <laughs> ah, yes. film. The whole thing, what an incredible evening, really. I think everybody so did, enjoyed it. Yeah, that's great. great.
All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.